My name is Andrew McMurray. I'm a professor in the Department of English Language and Literature at the University of Waterloo. And I've always been interested in the natural world, environmental issues, conservation. And when I got into English, I decided I wanted to focus on literatures and other kinds of texts that foregrounded environmental issues. So my work is what you call eco-criticism for the most part. I'm really interested in the reason why our species seems to be hell-bent on destroying itself and the rest of the planet. Uh, we all know about climate change. The rhetoric coming from politicians and business leaders is in stark contrast to what's coming from science. Science is pretty much settled on the fact that we're headed towards a real uh, crisis and that the crisis is ongoing and it's already begun and we're locked into certain pathways. But you wouldn't know it from the politicians. Uh, there, there's not much profit for them in uh, doomsaying or even being negative in their rhetoric. They have to provide a, a constant alternative that, while unrealistic scientifically, nevertheless is appealing to a popular mindset which wants to believe in a hopeful, optimistic future. And so from a rhetorical perspective, I'm very interested in this concept of hope, which we're always told we must, we must sort of uh, keep believing in, no matter how grim the future seems. The truth is, we're very quick to dismiss our fears and the dark side of our uh, attitude because we think it's not helpful in solving these environmental problems. So again, from a rhetorical or discursive perspective, I'm interested in how that figure plays out across a variety of cultural texts. People in, in fields like science and environment and engineering and other places that are dealing directly with the problems of the environmental crisis and their solutions, we know how they work. We know that they're coming up with ideas to help ameliorate these problems. The question for me is, what do people in humanities do? Is our job merely to study the human condition and pretend like the environment is just something, sort of a backdrop for those problems? We've got to figure out a way culturally, rhetorically, or scientifically, uh, economically, to bring those far things closer so that we can feel them palpably, so that we can fear them properly and try to act. You know, it's a great time in the world to be a pessimist and a cynic. And one of the ways that I disseminate my research is by making very grim mini documentaries about our environmental predicament, in which I incorporate found uh, archival footage with my own lectures. And I get a great response because I think <laughs> many of us uh, are quite aware that things are going to hell and we think for a moment that maybe, maybe if we're steely enough we can actually do something. So part of my job I think as a researcher of hope and its, uh, its paradoxes is to try to, in a, in a strange inverse way, uh, provide hope out of this uh, pessimistic scenario that I'm interested in presenting to people.